Welcome to Buck Scores Public Pursuit, Episode 5. After the Episode 4 hunt, we had that cold front come in, and the 2nd and 3rd of November were just wicked. High winds, rain, nasty weather. We were really anticipating that Friday, the 4th, was going to be the day. The winds had died from about 25 to 30 miles an hour, down to about 5. Temperatures were going to be in the mid-30s in the morning. We actually looked at some research and we found that a lot of big Pope and Young Bucks were being killed after winds had gone from 30 miles an hour down to about 5 miles an hour. Now obviously there's a lot of other factors that play in, but that's still some encouraging news and had us very optimistic for the morning of November 4th. Well, the only buck we captured was this great six point and at the time I thought it was a shooter seven point. Real wide but just not a lot of points on him and uh, he never really committed. We snort wheezed at him, grunted at him and he actually got scared and out of there. So, we woke up the next morning, November the 5th, it's a Saturday morning on public land, we figured there'd be some guys out hunting, nobody there when we got there, winds were about 15 miles an hour, so a good steady wind coming out of the southeast, and um, got into the stand, wouldn't believe it, 10 minutes before shooting light, here comes a doe right through, chased by two rack bucks. Now I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I hear a grunt. I look right below me and there's a buck. I can see the rack. I don't know how big he is because it's before shooting light. 
and he's working 12 yards from the stand. And he actually goes right up to a Bushnell trophy cam, and I wasn't sure if it got him on tape. But when we reviewed it, we could see that just for a quick second he was captured, and it's our friend, our two-year-old nine-point with kickers. That buck that I really want to make till next year, but man, is he popping up a lot. We've actually got him on camera a bunch of times in November uh, on both video and still shot. So we're trying to give him a pass and get him protected, but uh, if he keeps pulling what he's going to do, somebody else is going to get a shot off at him. Well, right at daybreak, I do a, a pretty aggressive rattling sequence. And at about 7.55, this three-point comes working up. He actually comes in downwind and never wins us, comes in perfect through the shooting lane, mills around for a good five minutes, and then works off. We give it a little bit of time and then we hit the rattling antlers again. Um, added a few grunts and a snort wheeze in there and I catch the movement behind me at about 845 at a good 70 yards under this thicket. Same thicket that we saw the six point the day before and uh, couldn't really tell, couldn't see anything and then all of a sudden boom he popped up and it's a shooter eight. Now, I'm not real sure which buck this is, but he was a, a really good buck, came right into this nice tree and started rubbing it, and we got that on film. And then he started working his way out and away, and uh, I grunted and snort wheezed, he just never would respond. Uh, I looked back behind me and there's a spike just feeding along at 20 yards. Wasn't real concerned with him because obviously there's a shooter buck in front of me. And I looked to where the eight point comes out of, and there's a six point standing there. So now I've rattled in three bucks. I grunt at the six point and he beeline. Now as this buck's getting closer, I can tell that he is ticked off. He's coming in and he means business. He stops right in front of our Bushnell trophy cam and makes a perfect scrape. Now he's about 35 yards, it's way too thick. I've got to somehow coax him into one of my shooting lanes. As the bucks start working down the hill, I give a couple soft grunts. They both line up perfectly and all they got to do is go straight ahead and they're going to give me a 20 yard shot. But wouldn't you know it, it doesn't work out and the buck feeds straight out along away from me. I grunt, I snort wheeze, nothing. At this point I realize that the bucks are only responding to rattling. Why? I have no idea. But when I hit those rattling antlers together, they come running. So I pick up the antlers and hit them real hard quick. I look up and there's a deer running right at me and it's not the eight that I just saw but another tall eight point. Well, after all that, I decided it's 9 o'clock, I'm going to let things settle down a little bit. It's been one of the best mornings I've ever had in the stand, and I feel like something's going to happen. We've seen one doe who's probably the hot doe in the area. 
as a biologist, I think she's probably one of the first to go into estrus in this area, and it just called all bucks in. At about 9.20, I'm thinking, okay, they're responding to rattling antlers only. I'm going to let one heck of a fighting sequence loose. I pick up the rattling antlers and just go to town for about two or three minutes. Quick update, guys. Things are really blowing up. I just rattled in four different bucks, three at one time, and I don't know where that high buck just came from. Two of them were definitely shooters, so we're going to rattle again see what we can do. Now this is where things get sketchy with self-film. I've got the rattling sequence on film and, and right afterwards I shut the camera off. As I turn to put my antlers back into my backpack, I look up and here comes a huge buck cruising right behind me. Now, I had a decision to make. I wanted to get him on film and I reached for the camera to start pulling it around. Just then, at 30 yards, he turns and starts coming right to the camera. What do you do in that situation? It's a mature buck and that's what we're here to do on Public Pursuit. As much as I want to get it on camera, it's what I set out to do, harvest a mature buck on public land. So I push the camera out of the way, grab my bow, and instantly go into full draw. It was all one motion. 22 yards, he comes in, misses my first shooting lane, and actually gets behind some branches. If I let him go by me, I'm going to be in the same situation I was just in with the other eight point, trying to call him across the hillside. So I grunt and stop him, and I decide to let the ray jeep between some branches. 20 yards, angling just a little bit too, I let it fly. Now, as soon as it hit, I knew it was just a little bit high, but perfectly behind the shoulder. I knew I caught one lung and decided, when in doubt, back out. Now, I probably would have been fine backing out for an hour, but I decided to leave him go for about three hours and go back home. Well, it's about one o'clock now, and Emily and I came back to really look for this buck. We start searching around and find some blood right away, and then it's on. I mean, a major blood trail. We definitely know by now that we caught at least one lung, if not both of them. After about 125 yards, I asked Emily to turn the camera on and really finish this track job out. There's a steep hillside in front of us, and as a biologist, I know a wounded deer is probably not going to go up that hillside, so he's got to be nearby. All right, guys, well, it's about 1 o'clock right now. We've given the buck close to three and a half hours. Um, I wasn't real sure about the shot. It looked like it was a little high, but I thought it was angling down. I did hit a branch, probably only got about half arrow penetration. But we've gone probably 125 yards, and we'll film the blood trail for you, but it's just been, the rage did its job. I mean, it's just been pouring out, so there's got to be a dead deer here soon. I wanted to get Emily to start filming before we get to this hillside because just my instincts as a biologist, I'm going to think a wounded deer is not going to go up that hillside, but maybe be in this ditch somewhere. So what we're going to do is start sneaking up. When in doubt, back out. I feel comfortable about backing out. After we found this blood trail, I feel real comfortable. So I've got an arrow knock just in case with a single lung. I may have to give him another shot. And we're going to keep working up here. But there's just little specks of blood bleeding right up to this creek. has been looking really bright red and spraying out. Blood right here. We got him. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Oh, man. Nice 
Paul, Paul, Missouri Puff. Woo! Beautiful eight point. Wow. What a deer. Man, our arrow, it's a little graphic for you guys, but um, that rage left no doubt. Half arrow penetration like we thought, a little bit high, but just smashed him in the lung. Uh, he is stiff as a board too, so we probably could have came back <laughs> an hour, but uh, man am I pumped up. Public land, Missouri, mature whitetail on the ground, beautiful time length. I'm almost positive that this is going to be big time eight. Uh, once we start looking at the trail cameras, he's got a huge G2 on this side, curve on this side, beam curves in. Man, is that an awesome, awesome buck. I, I'm thrilled. You know, last year, I didn't, uh, we hunted private property in Kentucky, and as most of you know, the season just wasn't real good. Warm weather, rut was just weird. Um, and I'll be honest, I didn't shoot a, a deer for the first time in my life on, on any kind of land. So coming in this year, I knew that it was going to be really hard doing the public land uh, only, but I was confident. I've put in the time. We shot a doe on Tuesday when we found out Emily and I are having a baby boy and dedicated that to him. And uh, his dad came through today with a freaking stud of an eight point. Just, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm pumped with the shot. I, it's just, the rage did its job. Blood trail was great. And just an awesome Missouri buck. So happy, guys. Buck scores public pursuit. Mature buck on the ground. We'll definitely pull a job in and see what he is, but we've got pictures of him, and now he's on the ground. I'm pumped up.